Does anyone else here enjoy seeing our friend Charlie Kirk from Turning Point USA and Turning Point Action lay down the good old smackdown against people who make race baiting left wing arguments such as this crazy notion of white privilege? I know I enjoy it, I'm sure you will too. So we're gonna get right into the video, but first everybody, please make sure you like our video, share it and subscribe to the Resist the Mainstream YouTube channel. I'm your host Darian and let's get right into it. The Latino in this, in this country, kind of want to ask your opinion on uh, white privilege because sure. I think I saw something on Facebook, someone shared like a video or a picture and I kind of want to just get your views on it. Um, if you could please. Awesome, uh, white privilege is racist, white privilege is a lie and it is a myth. Could you elaborate? Happy to, happy to, um, White privilege is racist, let's go through it. As soon as you begin to categorize certain individuals based on skin color, that in, that in, in, in of an essence is racism. It is. It is. If you say, oh, you're privileged because of your skin color, are you kidding me? I mean, you don't know about my background or my, you know, my upbringing. All of a sudden, you're generalizing an entire group of people just based on their skin color. That is racism. The definition of racism is putting a specific definition onto a group of people based on their skin color, a prejudice just based on their skin color. That is racism. Whether it's a good prejudice or a bad prejudice, that is racism. Is it a lie? Absolutely, it's a lie. Now, do our, have Caucasian Americans generally done better over the last, you know, 100 years? Yeah, that's correct. But there's also other communities that have done much better. Asian Americans, for example. I never hear about Asian American privilege. Asian Americans are the wealthiest, most productive, least likely to commit crimes members, members of the American community. Um, where's their privilege? Is their privilege based in skin color? Absolutely not. There's privilege based in making good choices. When you Facts. make good choices, those choices are rewarded. Um, Asian Americans entered mostly in the 1940s and 50s fleeing communism and Marxism. By doing so, they came into the American community widely discriminated against. In fact, if you ask your grandparents what they think of people from Asia, they won't say very nice things, especially your great-grandparents if they're still alive. Um, they made very good choices. They did the three things you need to do to stay out of poverty in America, according to Ben Shapiro, which is you got to graduate high school, get a job, and get married before you have kids. And over the last 60, 70 years, they are by far the richest uh, group that you can point to based on race in America by far. So here's the perplexing thing, is that I said it's racist sure. and it's a lie. What else did I say about it? I said something else. Um, it's very divisive, extraordinarily divisive, because if you're going to start to categorize people just based on their skin color, then they're nothing more than that racial group. They're not an individual. It's not saying that you could rise above your circumstance. It's not saying you can make good choices. It's not saying that oh, you might have been born behind and you can get ahead. Um, we want to talk about white privilege. Here's a good question. And anyone who, who, who here believes in it, please step up to the microphone. We can have a discussion. It's a little, um, nice. it might, I don't think it'll offend anyone, but it might bring someone back. Here's a really good question to ask. Are Jewish people privileged? Are Jewish people white? Anyone? Is, are Jewish people considered white? Technically, they uh, are. If you consider their history, uh, I would say not. Oh, they're um, not white. Then what are they? They're Semites. They're from the Middle East, at least historically speaking. Um, okay, so we don't have that as a box to check on the U.S. Census Bureau. I think there should be. There's a. There's oh, a, okay. So they should be Semites. Okay. Well, not Semites, but. Well, I mean that is the technical def that is the technical definition. But for lack of a better term, they are considered white. I'm white and I'm Jewish, and I don't think that I'm considered anything. Wrong. Yeah. So let here, let's go to this. I don't think it's a monolith, though. I mean, I think you can definitely if you identify as white and a Jew, like that's fine. But I know like there are a lot of people who have a lot of connections to, especially like Israel. Yeah, um, so here, here, here's the point. Here's the point, is the question. Just a quick comment I wanna make. You notice how the kid there said, when Charlie asked, are Jews white? The kid's response is, well, uh, you know, they've had some discrimination, so I don't know. That's not how the definition of white works. It's not based on perceived injustices or discrimination. It's, uh, it's literally what your skin color is. I, I can't believe we have to explain that, but <laughs> anyways, let's keep going. As if you categorize them as white, which you don't, most do, did they really have that good of a 20th century? Did they, were they really privileged over the last 100 years? Really? No. Yeah, they had an extermination order put up against them in an entire continent. Here's the point, is that if we are going to try to segregate the American populace based on skin color, that is the very definition of everything that we have tried to fight against in this country. Everything. And 
despite even historical and statistical trends, it just, it just isn't true. There's twice as many white people living in poverty in America than black people. Do they live at a higher rate? Absolutely they do. You talk in aggregate, aggregate numbers, it doesn't reflect to that. So look, here's the point. So yeah, what Charlie Kirk says there, I think is great uh, about the white people. It is very much true that there are more poor whites than blacks in America, as Charlie just pointed out. Something, you know, you look at, say, example, Appalachia, which is overwhelmingly white. I mean, almost everyone who lives in Appalachia, this is a, these mountains in West Virginia, they're nearly all white. They are one of the poorest areas of the United States, okay? In Appalachia, you have, uh, the, the average household income in a lot of cases is $40,000 a year for, we're talking families here, or even a lot less than that. And there's rampant drug use, alcoholic abuse, very tragic things of that nature. The poverty rate in Appalachia is right about 15%, all right? That's, that's very high. Or do those people have white privilege? According to some race baiting leftist, I suppose so. You know, they were born in this ivory tower of uh, drugs and poverty, uh, just incredible. So let's keep going. So here's the point, is that it is anti-individual and it is very much this idea of racial group collective that I think is extraordinarily harmful and creates this victimhood mentality that pits one group up against the other, that, that does not reward what America truly is, which is a place where good choices will eventually be rewarded. Go ahead and say something in response if you want to. Uh, yeah, just, I guess one follow-up question. Um, so you don't think that uh, specifically regarding the United States, like the crippling, like systematic oppression of like the 60s and before that has like any kind of effect whatsoever on African-American communities. Great question. Okay. I'm glad you asked that. Say it again. So um, say it again, because I can, I want to. Uh, do you think that the systematic oppressive laws of the 60s and prior to that have any kind of effect whatsoever on African-American communities today? Sure they did. But didn't the uh, internment camps against Asian-Americans in the 40s have something against them? They rose above it, right? So here's the question. Is America more racist today than we were in the 1960s? It's a legitimate question. Is anyone, can anyone possibly say we're more racist today? Then why are blacks worse off today than they were in the 1960s? Every single metric. It's because we've incentivized bad behavior over the last 60 years. Black single motherhood was 18% in 1965. It's now 71%. What happened? Is it because we got to be a more terribly racist country? No. Did we get more racist laws? No, we actually got rid of most of all of them. Civil Rights Act. We got rid of almost every single one. So what, what happened? It's because we incentivized really, really bad behavior. We said to single mothers, go ahead, have kids, and we'll give you a check every single month. But don't get married. As soon as you get married, you lose the check. We put, we put African Americans in urban areas and housing, housing projects that, again, incentivized bad behavior. And that was the advancement of the American welfare scheme, Propaga also coupled with um, failing public schools, run mostly by teacher unions that were not properly incentivized to try to get the people out of poverty that were very much in by every single metric. So quick thing there, Charlie asked, is America more racist today than it was in the 60s? Very obvious answer, no. And you wanna know why? Well, let's talk about something real quick. Charlie mentioned how very correctly pointed out that the single motherhood rate of black women in the United States skyrocketed from the 60s until now by an extreme margin. What was going on back then? In the 1960s, Lyndon B. Johnson was president. He was a Democrat president of the United States. Lyndon B. Johnson was very famous, or should I say perhaps infamous, or at least he should be, for his Great Society initiative. What was the Great Society? Well, according to Lyndon B. Johnson and the Democrats, the Great Society was a project to eliminate racial injustice and poverty. That was how they framed it. During the time when Lyndon B. Johnson was pushing this Great Society, and, well, rather planning the Great Society, there was a famous quote that is attributed to him. We'll have these N-words voting Democrat for over 200 years. Look that up if you don't believe me. So long story short, to Charlie's question, is there more racism today than there was in the 60s? No, obviously not. And I think Lyndon B. Johnson and what he did in the 1960s, and as well as the Democrat Party, very much demonstrates that. Let's get back to the video. African Americans are worse off today than they were in the 1960s with crime, prison rates, single motherhood, employment, wealth capita, everything. And there's only one possible explanation for that. It's not that America got, got more institutionally racist, none of that stuff. It's that there was a set of policies put forth by one president and continually supported by entire political party to LBJ. keep a whole segment of the population poor and routinely voting Democrat. And that's Lyndon Baines Johnson and the American Democrat Party, which um, I think completely punished it. So if you want to talk about systemic oppression and racism, there's lots of other examples of ethnic groups that went that, through that too. If that's the card you want to play, it, it does not couple. Almost every single one except African Americans and Native Americans have not rose above it statistically. And the only thing they have in common is absolute total government interference and involvement in their life. Well, I think those are great points made by Charlie Kirk. I'm sure many of you probably agree. Uh, but if you do, whether you do or you don't, just please comment your thoughts down below. 
And yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in and let us know if you have any other suggestions and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.